So today I shall be doing a bit of this. And a bit of this. No. And this. But before I tell you why I'm going to be wearing this hat, which actually is probably quite obvious by now, uh, I would like to remind you to subscribe to electrifying.com and remember to click the notifications on so you get updates when our next video drops and do comment below because we do love to hear from each and every one of you. If there's one thing that shows you've made it in life, it's a chauffeur-driven car. Think of the convenience. Think of the relaxation. No more getting stressed out in traffic or opting out of that glass of Chablis at lunch. And up to now, the car that said, I know how to make my chauffeur happy, would be the Mercedes S-Class. Massive, incredibly smooth, subtle, but imposing. It's got all the right elements to transport you from premiere to after party, city apartment to country pile, or palace to private jet. But now I have some competition from the same family. This is the new Mercedes-Benz EQS, and this is proper sibling rivalry. It's not small, is it? But it can't be, can it? Given that the EQS is essentially an electric S-Class, but based on a whole new set of bones. EQ is what Mercedes call it, it's all electric cars, so the end name quite, is quite obvious, EQ. S. Now, is it me or is this a bit egg-shaped? A massive, expensive, egg-shaped limo. Okay, so it's a bit more than that, isn't it? Now, Mercedes call it one bow design. And well, you can see where it's coming from. The car is more this big arc rather than the traditional S-class bonnet, doors, boot, three section. Now, that should make it more spacious and we will get into that in a moment but it also I think makes it look slightly more futuristic, even if some of the proportions are perhaps a little bit eccentric. But here's an interesting fact for you. You can't open the bonnet, nor can I. In fact, the only people that can open the bonnet are those that work for Mercedes and have the right certificate. So you are not going to be going under the bonnet of this EQS, but of course, you might still need access to top up the screen washer fluid. Well, you use this little slot here, it kind of reminds me of my dishwasher, where you put the rinse aid. Another oddity is that this car is a hatchback. Now that is great for practicality, and the boot is huge if a little shallow. But that's not the norm for big limos, and I like it. There's even this screen which protects the rear passengers from the wind and rain when the boot is open. Now that is a good thing because an S-Class is almost as much about the person in the back as it is in the front, right? I mean, actually probably maybe even more so because, well, unless your kids get to travel in rock star style, the person in the back is most likely the one paying the bills. So. Today, things are a little bit different. I am gonna play chauffeur, mainly because I actually need someone to help with the review of the rear passenger experience. And, uh, you know, I mean, I know I can usually do more than one thing at a time, but not in this case. So I'm off to pick up a very special passenger who is gonna be my very first back seat to ride a review. Now, as you might expect, there is a lot to take in, lots to look at. This particular car is actually fitted with Mercedes 8,000 pounds optional hyperscreen package. Yes, 8,000 pounds, it is optional. Um, now it's called the hyperscreen and it basically means your entire dash in front of you is one big curved mega screen. I mean, it does look amazing. It's very impressive. Would I spend eight grand on it? Maybe not. Um, but what it does mean is that the front seat passenger gets its own dedicated touch screen to play with. It's called the co-driver display. And actually in some countries, the passenger can watch movies very cleverly to make sure that the driver doesn't get distracted by whatever you're watching. There's a camera constantly monitoring the driver and it will switch off that display if they try and take a peek. I'm not quite sure how I feel about that. <laughs> Being watched the whole time when you're driving, I'm not a huge fan, but when it comes to the safety element, I suppose it is a good thing. Um, but it's probably not going to be allowed here in the UK because of all the legalities. 
Now, as standard, you would get the same big portrait screen as an S-Class, which does actually work really well. And um, But the Hyper screen goes just a bit further. Well, in fact, it goes all the way over there. Um, but it's supposed to bring both analog and digital bits together and artificial intelligence to make sure that all the functions you need are there when you need them. It supposedly will understand your habits. It will know you inside out. It will know you better than you know yourself. It almost will be reading your mind. So it becomes less distracting. That's the idea behind it. Um, now, we haven't had the car for long enough for it to actually understand and learn my driving habits. Um, but one question, I suppose, on my mind is that how can a three foot screen on your dash be less distracting? I'm not sure about that one. Um, and also it is so big that you do have to really kind of lean across to press some parts of the screen. Um, but having said all of that, it still looks very, very cool. Do let us know in the comments below if you think this is a great idea or just too much of a good thing. Now, the tech is all pretty impressive and there are bits built into the navigation, which mean it will take the most energy efficient route, avoiding hills and other power sapping roads which is rather clever. Now, of course, this has the inevitable voice activation. So let's give it a little test. Hey, Mercedes. How may I help you? Please, could you switch on my heated steering wheel? I'm sorry. This vehicle does not have steering wheel heating. No. Are you serious? £122,000 and you don't get a heated steering wheel? That has blown my mind. That's ridiculous. You can get one in a Vauxhall Corsa. Um, and as you will know by now, my two favorite things in a car is a heated steering wheel and the heated seats. I'm actually in disbelief. Wow, okay, that really changes things. Well, after that revelation, um, there are a couple of other niggles worth mentioning. For example, these switches, if you've got your arm kind of resting here, you sort of click them on and off with your wrist, which is a bit silly. Um, and then some of these switches around here, they're a bit loose. They don't feel very Mercedes-like. Slightly, oh, where am I off to? Oh, whoever was in here last time really enjoyed their drive. This is a bit relaxing. I'd also say that it is just as well this car has some pretty amazing cameras to help you park because it's actually really quite tricky to see where the corners are from the driver's perspective. Let's look at the bigger bits. This version is the EQS 450 and it gets a whopping 107.8 kilowatt hour battery. Now that's over twice the size of the battery in something like a Vauxhall Mocha E or an average electric hatchback. And that means big range, which makes sense in a big car, right? The 450 is rated at 453 miles on the industry test cycle which still means that in the real world, you probably get a range in the high 300s. It will charge at 200 kilowatts if you can find a big enough charger. And under certain circumstances, it can actually take on power at up to 400 kilowatts, which is super fast. Now, it's good for 10 to 80% in half an hour, and your average home or box will see it from flat to a full battery in about 17 hours. Okay, that's not overnight, but remember, it is a big old battery, don't forget. Now, as far as actually driving it goes, well, I've got to say that it feels so much smaller than it really is, which I think is a good thing. Um, the car has this very direct and rear steering. Um, so actually what happens is the rear wheels steer in the opposite direction to the front wheels when you're going at slower speeds, which basically makes it turn much more sharply. And it really does work. It might be a massive car, but it feels genuinely about three feet shorter than it actually is. And I think that's kind of crucial if you're driving to your office in town or getting into small spaces or wiggling around tight car parks. Talking of towns, the EQS will of course be exempt from all the congestion charges and low emission zone fees, which will hit many cities. Now, the odd few quid in fees might not seem important to someone who can afford a car like this, 
but it will soon add up if you drive it every day. Now, to make sure it's efficient, there is just one motor that drives the back wheels and it's actually surprisingly nippy. There is air suspension, a standard, which we thought would kind of result in a very comfortable ride, but it's kind of slightly disappointing on that front. I think it feels a little bit firmer on the broken road surfaces than I would expect, but it does get better as you go faster and on smooth tarmac. It's actually really, really quite quiet in here very relaxing, very quiet. And that is something that even the smoothest of V12 engines cannot match. Now I should probably mention the brakes at this point because the EQS will do lots of things for you automatically if you want it to. But if you do want to just use your brake pedal in the old fashioned way, it just feels it needs a bit of a sort of heavy shove at times. It's a little bit soft, which is a bit of a surprise, but it was worth pointing out. Okay. I think this is probably enough of me playing around. It is time to find out just how good the EQS is for the very important passengers, the people in the back, of course. So let's go and pick up my VIP. But hang on a minute, something doesn't feel quite right. Ah, now that's better. Leah, Hello. hi. Good morning. Lovely to meet you. Good morning. How are you? Well, I'm very well. We have a lovely Mercedes EQS Ooh. waiting for you. Um, this looks nice. And I'll take you wherever you want to go. Okay. Within reason. Yes. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Well, madam, let me get the door for you. Thank you. <laughs> Make yourself comfortable. This looks very nice. <laughs> and uh, enjoy the journey. Thank you. So first of all, um, I should probably know, where would you like to go, Leah? <laughs> I'm thinking um, it's quite early, so um, breakfast, maybe? Uh, yes, that sounds like a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> I'm gonna jump on that bandwagon. So Leah, tell me a bit about yourself because it's kind of ironic in a way. It is by complete sort of randomness that you are in this car, but you do work at the total opposite end of the spectrum when it comes to cars, don't you? I'm the operations director within a classic car specialist. Um, been there for over about 10 years now. Um, so yeah, very much um, classic cars. And, what um, classic cars? Jensen Interceptors Amazing. and um, all sorts of various models and also the editor of the Jensen magazine as well. What are your thoughts on this whole electric revolution? I'll be honest, I was worried. Um, initially. Yeah. There have been some customers that have been asking about whether they could convert their classic car to electric but um, initially there was a worry but I still think there's a, a place for both um, for the electric cars and for classic cars as well. Does it feel like you're in an electric car right now? Not at all. Not at all. By the way, how's my driving? Perfect. <laughs> I could get used to this. Yeah. It's actually quite nice having someone to talk to. The <laughs> amount of driving I have to do by myself, it gets really quite boring. <laughs> yeah, this is quite nice. I might sit in the back more often. <laughs> yeah, what's it like in the back? Tell me. What, uh, what are your first impressions back yeah, there of the EQS? Comfortable. I have actually got quite a bit of room. There's heated seats here, mod cons, you can sort your temperature out at the back. And uh, yeah, nice. Spacious as well. Okay, right, let's see how you can experience sport mode. For... Oh, that was great oh. acceleration. And I like the noise, the sort of sound effect that it Ooh. comes. A bit of a so hum. That's all built in. That's all built in, right. yeah. Okay. So that is a um, an additional sound effect that they've added. Ooh, yeah. Okay, so from what you've experienced so far, mm. how would you rate the Mercedes EQS out of 10? What are its good points? What are its bad points? And you can be critical, don't okay. worry. There's a vast amount of good points. It's comfortable, which is, for me, that's really, really important. Yeah. Um, it's got all what you would want in the back in terms of charging points, being able to adjust your temperature, and heated seats, you can see out of the window well, you can see right around the car actually, which is quite good. I like the um, sunroof, so yeah, happy with that. I don't think, I at the moment, haven't got 
any bad points to say. <laughs> oh, this is looking positive. I know, uh-huh. very positive. No noise, no noisy V8, no smell of fumes. I How do know. you feel about that? I know, I'm comfortable with that. <laughs> um, <laughs> and although, yeah, I might miss the roar of the engine, but there's quite a good acoustics in here. I don't know if that would get a little bit annoying after a while, but otherwise, I haven't really got any bad points. Okay, so if you have to give this Mercedes EQS a number out of 10, Leah, Ooh. what would it be? I'd give it a nine because there's always room for improvement, isn't there? But I would give it a nine out of 10. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Ketchup. <laughs> well, bon appetit. Thank you very much. So there you have it. A nine out of ten for the back seats of the new EQS. That is maybe a little bit generous, don't you think, given that, you know, there are cars out there with better rear infotainment systems. But perhaps the high score is maybe due to my rather excellent chauffeur skills. I don't know. <laughs> I think from the front, though, I'm going to give it a Seven and a half. Seven felt a bit stingy. Eight, a little bit too generous. Can we give halves? Well, we can now. I think it's just that it's not quite what I expected. I thought it was going to be the ultimate in smooth cruising, a bit of an electric super limo, but it feels a lot sportier than that. Now, that might not be a bad thing for you. Um, it depends what you personally want out of the car, of course. I think in a way, I know this sounds a bit strange, I would say it feels a bit like a big mini to drive that's just because it is so nimble and agile which is maybe not what you're expecting as well and it is ultimately good fun to drive um, but I just thought this car would have more of a relaxed approach to driving oh. <laughs> it's absolutely crazy come and warm your hands up on the nice heated steering wheel in my Vauxhall <laughs> that's it come on let's 